Before we're done with the techniques for this project, there's one last piece of UI kit joy we have to tackle. Once we've processed the user's image, we'll get a UI image back. But we need a way to save that image to the user's photo library. This will use a UI kit function called UI image write to saved photos album, which in its simplest form is trivial to use. But in order to make it work usefully, you have to wade back into UI kit. At the very least, it'll make you really appreciate how much better Swift UI is. Before we write any code, I need you to make one small change to the info.plist file for your project. You see, writing to the photo library is a protected operation, which means we can't do it without explicit permission from the user. iOS will take care of asking for permission and checking the response, but we have to provide a short string explaining to users why we want to write images in the first place. To do that, open info.plist, right click on some empty space, then choose add row. You'll see a drop down list of options to choose from. I'd like you to scroll way, way, way down to where the P letters are and select privacy, photo library additions, usage description. For the value on its right, please enter the text. We want to save the filtered photo. With that done, we can now use the UI image write to save photo albums method to write out a picture. We already have this load image method from our previous work. We could modify that so it immediately saves the image that got loaded, effectively creating a duplicate. So add this line to the end of the method. UI image, write to save photos album, input image, nil, nil, nil. And that's it. Every time you import an image, our app will save it back to the photo library. The first time you try it, iOS will automatically prompt the user for permission to write the photo and show the string we added to the info.plist file. Now you might look at that and think that was easy and you'd be right. But the reason it's easy is because we did the least possible work. We provided the image to save as the first parameter, then provided nil as the other three. Those nil parameters matter, or at least the first two do. They tell Swift what method should be called when saving completes, which in turn will tell us whether the save operation succeeded or failed. If you don't care about that, then you're done. Passing nil for all three is fine. But remember, users can deny access to their photo library. So if you don't catch a save error, they'll wonder why your app isn't working properly. The reason it takes UIKit two parameters to know which function to call is because this code is old, way older than Swift, and in fact so old it even predates Objective-C's equivalent of closures. So instead, this uses a completely different way of referring to functions. In place of the first nil, we should point to an object. And in place of the second nil, we should point to the name of the method that should be called on that object. If that sounds bad, I'm afraid you only know half the story. You see, both of those two parameters have their own complexities. The object we provide must be a class and it must inherit from NS object. This means we can't point to a Swift UI view struct. And the method is provided as a method name, not an actual method. This method name was used by Objective-C to find the actual code at runtime, which would then be run. That method has to have a specific signature, i.e. list of parameters, otherwise our code just won't work. But wait, there's more. For performance reasons, Swift prefers not to generate code in a way that Objective-C can read. That whole lookup methods at runtime thing was really neat, but also really slow. And so when it comes to writing the method name, we have to do two more things. First, mark the method using a special compiler directive called hash selector, which asks Swift to make sure the method name exists where we say it does. And second, add an attribute called at obj-c to the method which tells Swift to generate code that can be read by Objective-C. You know, I wrote UIKit code for over a decade before I switched to Swift UI, and already saying all this explanation out loud makes the old API seem like a crime against humanity. Sadly, it is what it is, and we're stuck with it. Before I show you the code, I want to mention the fourth parameter. So the first one is the image to save. The second one is an object that should be notified about the result of the save. The third one is the method on the object that should be run. And then there's a fourth one. We aren't going to be using it here, but you do have to be aware of what it does. We can provide any sort of data here and it'll be passed back to us when our completion method is called. This is what UIKit calls context and helps you identify one image save operation from another. You can provide literally anything you want here. So UIKit uses the most hands-off type you can imagine a raw chunk of memory that Swift makes no guarantees about whatsoever. 
This has its own special type name in Swift, unsafe raw pointer. Honestly, if it weren't for the fact that we had to use it here, I simply wouldn't even tell you it existed because it's just not useful at this point in your app development career. Anyway, that's more than enough talk. Before you decide to throw this project away and go straight to the next one, let's get this over and done with. As I've said, to write an image to the photo library and read the response, we need some sort of class that inherits from NS object. Inside there, we have to have a method with a precise signature that's marked with at obj c. And we can then call that from UI image write to save photos album. Putting all that together, please add this class somewhere outside of content view. Class image saver, inherits from NS object, func write to photo album, image UI image. UI image write to save photos album, image self hash selector save error, nil. And then at obj c, func save error, underscore image UI image, did finish saving with error, error, optional error, context info, that lovely unsafe raw pointer, print save finished. With that in place, we can now use it from Swift UI like this. Let image saver equals image saver. Image saver dot write to photo album, image input image. If you run the code now, you should see the save finished message output as soon as you select an image. Yes, that is remarkably little code given how much explanation it needed. But on the bright side, that completes the overview for this project. So at long, long, long last, we can get into the actual implementation. Please go ahead and put your project back to its default state so we have a clean slate to work from.